So in today's episode of How to Day Trade Spy with a Small Account, which was inspired by another comment, I get a ton on YouTube asking me how much money do you need to trade spy? You know, what is considered a small account? Can I do it with $100, $200, $300, right? Like, can I do it with actual beer money and play money, which you guys know I'm a big fan of that type of strategy, right? Just playing with money that you don't necessarily care about. Now, obviously some people $100 is like the end of the world if they lose that. And like I always say, if that's the case for you, then start paper trading until you can build up your capital. But if you're somebody who's like, I've got a couple hundred dollars and I want to see how this works, or I at least want to start from that point of view, that really, really small amount of money. So if I do lose it, it's not the end of the world, then hopefully this episode is going to be really beneficial for you. So how I do things is first, I do want to warn every single person watching this. Two things, the commenters down below, the WhatsApp commenters are not me. Please avoid them at all costs. They're spam bots that are really hard to control. And then when it comes to Instagram, I will never direct message you. And those are all also spam bots and spam people. So please avoid all spammers. Do not get spammed and check the description box down below for my Instagram handle. That is my only account. Okay, now to the good stuff is I'm going to break this down into three steps as usual and then we will hop on the screens. I'll show you examples of exactly what I'm talking about and how much money you do need to trade spy profitably, right? So yes, you can start with $100, but that's not going to be the most ideal situation. You're going to be very limited. So let's do something a little bit more realistic and I will show you guys examples like I talked about. So let's start with what you need to do for step number one and that is understand how to analyze market conditions and use technical analysis to determine what is a good entry and exit and where is your risk level going to be. This is huge. So you cannot pick a strategy plan and execute unless you know how to analyze the markets, right? Analyze SPY and understand what you're looking at. So let's first dive into that just in case you are maybe brand new to my channel or just the concept. I want to make sure everyone's on the same page. So let's go analyze SPY and I'll bring you through exactly what I'm doing today in order to get ready to trade it. I'm actually just prepping for market open. I typically have four charts up and I can just move them as I see fit. I just trade on one laptop, so that's how I do things. And then I'm also in a swing trade on SONN. Um, and then SPY is right here. So this is my typical setup and then I just move it accordingly. But for the case of analyzing SPY, I do have a ton of lines and uh, indicators and things like that on my chart. So let's get a clean one up and we'll use trading view for this. So I definitely just, I don't use this often. You can tell because ads everywhere, but I do like to use it when I'm doing examples because my other charts are just way too crowded. So let's start with a clean slate here. And we are looking at the SPY on a very big time frame point of view, right? So I'm a big fan of zooming out and then zooming in. Even if you're day trading, you still need to zoom out because you need to understand where we are, where your levels are, and be able to analyze those, draw those out. So you're not surprised if we're gapping up, you know, to 420. <laughs> I was definitely not surprised once we held a key level of mine that we then in fact gapped up to 420 because I was prepared. I analyzed the market from a zoom out point of view and then zoomed in in order to day trade it. So looking left here, you can see right in this area is what's going to be of interest to me because this is where we currently are opening up in pre-market. So it's about 8.52 a.m. market opens about 40 minutes from now. So just looking left, you can see this is the area that we are going to be most interested in. And then obviously right in here, we have surpassed these levels. So these two would be of interest to me. So then I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to be looking from about May, we will go May 10th of 2021 and beyond. So let's zoom in there. Okay, so I went from the one week chart to the one day chart. And I'm not a huge fan of, I just actually am not used to charting on TradingView. I'm definitely a think or swim girl all day long when it comes to charting. But one thing that I do see right off the bat is, do you see this gap right here? So this gap right here, let me try to zoom in a little bit more. And then we'll do this. Okay, so this gap was pretty significant. And ever since we gapped up here, we continued the melt up right into about 422. So what was the high on this candle? The high on that candle is 422.74. So that's going to be really, really key and important level for me, 422.74, because that's the high right in here 
before we started to melt back down to around 405. So 422.74 is definitely a level I'm going to mark out and I can actually go back over and we can just do that together. So I'm going to add that to the levels I already have on my chart. And then I love it if I can see them. Sorry, I just had to zoom out and make sure I was looking at the right thing. So I'm going to go ahead and mark this out, have this on my chart. I like to put them in yellow and then let's do it on the right. So that's a key level, 422.74. Right now we're sitting in micro range, which is just a fib strategy I have created. And that's what all these lines are on my chart. Uh, this fib strategy is like my golden nugget. But when it comes to just the basics, right? So you're drawing your basic support and your resistance levels. So you know that if we start melting up, okay, where's your next target to the upside? Or if we start melting down, where's your next target to the downside? And that's what I mean by understanding. And I guess I can go ahead and move SON in. That's what I mean by understanding where your big picture point of view is, you're analyzing the SPY chart, you're looking at previous data, you're marking out your levels and you're understanding, okay, once we surpass 420, what level am I looking at next? So that's where you need to analyze it in order to be prepared. You don't want to be reactive. You want to be proactive and have everything already drawn out. And that is literally step number one for me. Every morning I will get up and I will look at where we are on the chart and then I will look at levels that we're near and then create a game plan that will help me that day. So I'm just already prepared, right? I'm not just jumping in like, oh, okay, well, maybe we'll go to 421 or maybe we'll go to 415. No, I have everything prepped and planned before market opens, so then I can act accordingly. So that's going to be really, really key to profitably day trade SPY. And we will get into how much money you need to do this, and it's not a ton of money. Or you can actually do it with $100 or less, but you are going to have more risk associated. So we'll look at that in different uh, contracts and strikes and expiration in just a minute. So... When it comes to analyzing from here, we added one key level. I've got another key fib level of 423.97 above that. So let's keep looking. Let's keep analyzing. Let's go back to trading view just so I can have a clear picture here. Okay, so now I'm feeling pretty good about back there. Let's go to closer to where we are right now, which is in the 420 area. Okay, so 420 is right in here and you can see we had another gap up so right in here so now we have gotten out of the gap up section right here and we are melting up into this piece so this piece was an interesting actually remember this so this was a really nice melt up all the way into 430 and it happened fairly quickly after this gap up so we're not gapping up, but we are gaining momentum to the upside. And so now we have crossed into the territory of this piece of the move right here. And so when it comes to resistance, you can see we had one red candle, but we didn't really have any strong resistance until 430 when it comes to this area. So keeping that in mind, I am going to now go back to Thinkorswim and let's draw some more levels. So actually what date I forgot to look at the date just to make sure I'm looking at the right thing so we are looking at around August 16th of last year so let's go and plot those out so there was actually a pretty decent red candle that had a peak at around 424.95 around that August time frame and so I am going to use that high as a another interesting level for me and so now I have a couple different interesting levels here and they are pretty close to my 423.97 level. So in reality, I'll probably just use my FIB strategy for my next level to the upside, but it's good to know and understand and have these other levels of potential resistance on your chart just in case, you know, we're stalling out before we get to this level because we have melted up rather quickly. And that's not reasoning too short, but that is, you know, something that you need to be extra cautious on when playing the upside. If we have melted up so fast so soon and you are playing that upside, you've just got to be very, very careful that you understand potential resistance points on the way up. So you don't get caught in something like this, which you can see we had, you know, a really, really nice flush down multiple times in this area. And so if you are chasing the upside, you would have easily gotten stopped out. So that's just 
coming into play when you're looking at your day trading strategy and your entries, your exits, your risk management. I'm not a big fan of chasing moves like this. I definitely was looking for the downside, which we had a nice play on. Um, but just overall, the whole point here is zooming out, plotting those key levels, right? Looking left, where are we at now on the chart? And then what has happened previously when we were near that range? So you can look for potential areas of support and resistance, potential areas to go short, or potential areas where you can get some continuation to the upside and be prepared. Okay, if we are over 420 and we're continuing, maybe 422.74 could be a good target to look for if we do stall out. And that'll be where I take profits. So that's kind of the thought process you want to use. And that's not including the fact that we definitely need to analyze the downside, but just for sake of this video not being too long, at least we got some upside targets in mind, but I definitely would always have both upside and downside targets. So a bull case and a bear case planned out before market opens. So you're prepared either way. Okay, so a big part of this video is just helping you understand how to zoom out and analyze market conditions and use technical analysis in your favor to come up with a game plan, right? So number two is you need to pick a strategy plan and execute. And then we'll go over things that you absolutely need to avoid doing to end this because these are going to make sure that you never successfully grow a small account. So absolutely make sure that you are watching till the end because this is going to be very important. But first, let's talk about picking a strategy, planning and executing what that looks like. So to give you guys an example, I'm actually just going to show you what I posted in the group today and just analyzing really quick what happened yesterday using my fifth strategy, which I love so much. You can see that we had a perfect bounce off of this yellow line, which is a fib level to end the day right in micro range. And that is no coincidence. So these are things that I do to prep ahead of time using the strategy that I have created and that I love and it makes sense to me. So whatever strategy you pick, it has to make sense to you and you have to fully understand how to execute on it, right? So if you are, let's just say that you're going to use what we're going to use my, you know, bread and butter that I like to teach on this channel, just because it's super simple, right? The trend line. So if you're using the trend line, we can actually go see what that looks like. And this is my plan just based off my strategy. So one target to the upside for 23.97. And we'll also probably add in that one that I just charted out that 422 level. What was it exactly? 422.74 will be an, another area of interest before we get there. And then I also have downside targets in mind as well. So the first one being near this 418 level and the second one being near 416 and then obviously 414.56 underneath that. But it really will depend what the first 30 minutes of the day looks like because I don't trade typically the first 30 minutes or at least especially if you're new, I really don't recommend trading that. That's something you should avoid because there's just too much volatility. There's a lot of chop it's a great time to scalp but not so much day trade especially if you have a small account it's going to be very very difficult so i would highly recommend waiting for those a plus setups which usually come when direction is clear which usually is after the first 30 minutes at least so let's go do a plan together and let's just use the basic trend line and let's just keep it very simple so let's say that you're looking for a trend line bounce right so to draw this trend line let's just do a rough one here which is Pretty cool because, I mean, it lines up with my micro range right here. So two different ways that I could look at this. Let's just say you're brand new or you're just overwhelmed. You're like, I need something simple, Brittany. Just, you know, all these lines are confusing me. So what I would look for based off of this simple trend line is two things. So a bullish case would be we come down to test this trend line. And if we hold, I'll be looking for calls to the upside as long as we hold over 420 to 419 for continuation to that level that we created near 422.74. If we break this trend line, I would then be looking for the next level down. You could see old resistance turn new support. That's an easy way to look at it. So then I would be targeting 418. And that's just a very simple strategy that we just went over in probably like less than two minutes, right? Using a very simple trend line and nothing else. Well, obviously we want to draw those key support and resistance levels and then go from there. But you guys can see it doesn't have to be as complicated as some people make it out to be. Now, don't get me wrong. I love to make it, you know, more complicated and add, you know, things that will help your edge increase over time. But you can start as simple as a trend line. And so that is what my plan would look like. Now, risk level associated with that. Now let's dive into what it would cost you to get in this trade, right? So there is 
A few ways that I like to trade SPY with a small account, but I will say one of my favorite ways has always been options. And because you can just go in with a very small amount of money and you can actually make some decent gains and not have to have, you know, a crazy account over 10,000 or anything like that. And you can definitely day trade using a small amount of money. I mean, I've even done that beer money video where I was using $100 to day trade spy. Highly recommend you go watch that after this one. Um, but let's just go over a few different scenarios, right? So how much money would you need in order to day trade spy? So one key thing I want to go over is make sure you have the correct account type. If you don't, I do have a free day trading seminar linked in the description box down below, which is something else you can go watch after this. But that will make sure that you have the correct account type in order to be able to get around the PD T rule and day trade with a small account. So options wise, you have different contracts that are going to cost you a different amount of money. And so I don't know how familiar you are with options, but what we're looking at right now is the options chain. And so today's the 19th. So these do expire that day. They are going to be very, very cheap, but extremely risky. So let's look at something like next week. Let's look at the 23rd. So let's say that you were trading the 23rd, which is still short-term expiration. This is a day trading strategy. This is not a swing trading strategy. Don't ever try to swing trade short-term expiration dates on SPY or any uh, stock ETF, whatever. If you swing trade options, you will most likely lose all your money. That is just a fact. Theta will eat you away unless you get lucky and that luck will eventually run out. So this is strictly day trading, guys. I want to highlight that. Um, and making sure you have your risk level in place. So how much money it's going to cost you also has to do with how much risk you're going to take on. So that's where finding the sweet spot can be super helpful. So let's go back to the chart really quick. I'm going to move everything over and then let's just see. So SPY is at 420. The plan that we said was the bullish plan was we were looking as long as we can hold trend, we were looking for continuation to 422.74. So then let's go look at call contracts near that strike price. So let's see, we're not looking at zero DTE. Let's go look here. Okay. So we've got 423 calls for $71 per contract. So if you have a small account, let's say of a couple hundred dollars, you could easily trade these. I would definitely recommend just doing one contract at a time. One contract at a time is going to be the way that you build discipline. It's also going to help when managing your risk. And if you have a small account, you definitely need to be just trading very small and slow to build it up. So one contract would cost you about $70 to $71 in order to trade the 423 calls that expire next week. Now, you could go cheaper than that, right? You could absolutely go cheaper. So Remember we did our analysis that we did have the potential to melt up. So if we're really, really strong, we've got that potential to go to 424 to 425. So if you wanted to go a little bit further out of the money, now that is further out of the money, which means you're going to have more risk associated if we don't move in your favor. Those will be much cheaper around $34 per contract. So this is really based on your risk tolerance and figuring out a sweet spot that makes sense for you. Highly recommend paying attention to volume and open interest and not picking one that that's like an outlier and has no volume on it because that will get you in trouble when you're trying to exit. So this would just be an example of how much money you would need, right? You can go around $100 per contract, $34 per contract. And now if you really want to be risky and you go Monday, it's Friday. Again, these are not ones that you hold overnight they will be cheaper. So obviously the closer to expiration you get, they will be cheaper, but there is more volatility and more risk. So this is where you have to find a spot that's comfortable for you. And typically, you know, next week, a few days out is where most of my members find confidence. So like that three day mark. And a common misconception is that you need the amount of money to buy the shares in relation to the option contracts you trade. That is not true. As long as you were just buying calls and puts, not doing anything fancy like selling premiums or anything like that. So all I would need, let's say that I wanted to buy one call, going back, let's say that I wanted to buy this one call contract for $22 for $70. All I would need is $70 if I wanted to buy one contract. I do not need the amount of money to buy the 100 shares or anything like that. That is a very common misconception that no, I do not need that money. The only thing I need is the $70. The only thing I can lose is $70 if I don't have a stop loss. But you absolutely should have a stop loss. And again, remember, if we're holding trend, then we're good to the upside. But if we break trend, you need to have your risk level 
somewhere in here because there is a good chance we go to 418. If we don't hold there, there's a good chance that we're going to fill the gap back down to 416. But as long as we hold trend and we are making higher lows, we are bullish and you should be good to go when it comes to playing the uptrend. Wow, this video ended up being a lot longer than I expected, but I hope you guys found value in it. So let's cover number three to wrap this up. And this is going to be pretty quick, but just pointing out some very, very obvious sometimes, but not so obvious to some people. These are common mistakes that I have personally made. I've seen a ton of other people make over the years, especially, you know, people that I have taught or they had very bad habits and strategies. These were the common things that they were doing that caused them to lose money. And again, I've done them too. So no shame here. So uh, please avoid these common mistakes that we're about to go over. Okay, going back to picking your option contract, please avoid the common mistake of thinking, oh wow, if I go trade zero DTEs, then I can go grab a 423 call for $16 versus $70. This is a big mistake because if you are not advanced in your trading, you are not having that really, really quick reaction time, you don't have your stop loss in place, you will just lose your $16. And oftentimes what people do is they take the 16 and they don't buy one contract. They're like, oh, well, I could buy like, you know, four or five contracts versus this one over here where I can only buy, you know, one or two based on my account size, right? So let's say if you've got a $300 account size, they just go all in on how, you know, let's say, let's go even cheaper, right? Just for math's sake, let's say that you ended up getting these for about $10 because after open, the premiums are going to fluctuate. So let's say you had a $300 account. What the most common mistake was is they would go buy 30 of these versus going to buy three of these. And all we needed was one dip at open if you were playing calls and you just wiped out all your premium, probably lost about 60% of your account in one trade and it could take less than five minutes. So big, big mistake is trading those short-term expiration dates because they're so attractive when it comes to finding cheap alternatives, like cheap contracts, but cheap does not mean that it's a good thing, right? Cheap should be a big warning sign because if the contracts are cheap, they're most likely either very short-term in expiration or very out of the money, which are both a disaster combination. So please avoid that mistake at all costs. And that's something I definitely did and blew a bunch of money doing. So can speak from experience. The next common mistake I see is people are too fixated on yesterday when day trading and they don't zoom out. So you see how we zoomed out to get levels like 422.74 and 424.95. Now, this is not going to be 100% necessary every single time. It just depends on where we are in the chart, right? Especially considering we have had such a big melt up, it's even more important that you're looking left at previous levels, regardless of how far, you know, or long ago that was. So you're prepared because what if we do catch resistance at 422 level and you had no idea that that was a previous resistance level and you weren't prepared. And so you were making money. You didn't take profits because you didn't have a take profit in mind and you lost all your profits because we got slammed back down. So not preparing and not zooming out is also a big common mistake. And that brings me to the last one we're going to talk about, number three, in step number three. So the number three mistake, and that is not being able to control your emotions. So if you have a small account, you might not actually be emotionally tied to your money, which could cause you to start gambling and create bad habits. So I encourage you to find a sweet spot, a small account that does mean enough to you to take it seriously, but is not going to ruin your entire day or life if you do happen to lose some of that money. So finding that sweet spot because money is super, super tied to emotions. And when you involve emotions in anything you do, you become very irrational and it can really bring out a lot in you, not the good stuff, the bad stuff. So make sure that you understand what discipline looks like and self-control and how to control those emotions with whatever type of money you are using to trade with. And that's a wrap for today. I appreciate you guys so much for watching. I do want to highlight that if you want more from me, I make a ton of free content, right? So go through my YouTube, watch all my videos. I try to post at least one to two per week. I also have that free day trading seminar linked in the description box down below. There's a master link. It's the first one, free day trading seminar, and that will explain what account type you need and all those juicy details when it comes to day trading with a small account, especially options, which is my bread and butter. Um, but if you want 
want more from me, I do have an eight week program. It goes over my advanced scalping strategies, A to Z. So whether you're a beginner or advanced, you can come in wherever you are. I also go over things like how I trade futures. I also trade penny stocks. I, I do a little bit of everything and it's all covered in the eight week program, including an awesome community of traders where we go and share ideas daily. And just, it's like a virtual classroom. You get to learn and come to the markets every day and do it with people who have the same goals as you. So if you're interested, that is also in the description box down below. It's the second link underneath that free day trading seminar. But that is a wrap for today. I appreciate you all for watching and I hope to see you here next week.